For today's video, we have Alex Adamu. Alex is the director of the London Mathematical Laboratory, and we have worked together on ergodicity economics for about a decade now. I'm sure we will see a lot more of Alex on the channel in the coming months and years. What is ergodicity? Take it away, Alex. Hello and welcome. This introductory talk will be in three parts. I'll start with the basic definition of ergodicity, then I'll say a few words about the history of our understanding of randomness, and finally I'll give some examples of ergodic and non-ergodic processes. So we'll start with the basic definition. We're interested in quantities which vary over time and across systems. Things like wealths of citizens, blood pressures of patients, temperatures at weather stations, and so on. Often we take averages of such quantities. So the first question to ask is how? The standard model of such a situation is the stochastic process. This is a mathematical object, big X of t, which has a set of trajectories little x n of t. So little x n of t is the observation in system n at time t. Here are some simulated trajectories in which time runs horizontally across the screen, systems run vertically up the screen, and we're looking at five different trajectories. The first type of average we can take is a time average, where we fix the system, in this case n equals 4, and average horizontally along that trajectory. So we integrate from some start time to some end time and then divide by the window length. When the window length is finite, we call this a finite time average. And if we let the window length diverge, then we get what we call the time average, which we denote x bar. So the time average is the average value along a single long trajectory. The other type of average we can take is called an ensemble average, where we fix time and average vertically over many different systems. Where the number of systems is finite, big N, we call this the finite ensemble average. And when we let the number of systems diverge, we call this the ensemble average, and we denote it with angled brackets. So x in angled brackets is the ensemble average, which is the average at a fixed time over many systems. The ergodicity question is really very simple. Are these two averages equal? If they are, then we say that the stochastic process bx of t is ergodic. In other words, a stochastic process is ergodic when the operations of taking an average along a single long trajectory and taking an average at a fixed time over many different trajectories are equivalent. Now, the time average and the ensemble average are conceptually different operations. The time average is informative of a single system over long time, and the ensemble average is informative of an aggregate of systems. The relevant average depends on our research question. In economics, for example, time averages are important to individual decision makers, while ensemble averages are useful in problems faced by large collectives like insurers or pension funds. Ergodicity is a special case, which we may be able to exploit, in which these two averages are interchangeable. That's really all there is to ergodicity, so why is there so much left of this video? Well, I want to explain how ergodicity arose historically and why it matters to scientists today. We start in the 1650s which is the dawn of probability theory and indeed of economics. The random variable was the first model of an uncertain numerical outcome. It consists very simply of a set of possible realizations and a set of corresponding probabilities. The expectation value of a random variable is defined as the probability weighted average of the realizations. Now these are just mathematical objects and we haven't said anything yet about what they mean. The most common interpretation is the frequentist interpretation, which works like this. We imagine a large sample of independent realizations of the random variable. The probability pi is the relative frequency of realization xi in the sample. In other words, the number of times we see xi divided by the total number of observations. 
and the expectation value is simply the average of the realizations in the sample. And these are all in the limit of diverging sample size. Now there's no information here about whether the sample is drawn from one system at many different times or from many systems at one time. So in order to address the ergodicity question, we will somehow have to disentangle time and systems. This became an issue two centuries later when randomness was added to physics to form the field of statistical physics. Researchers at the time grappled with how to interpret probabilities and expectation values physically. They had to make a choice between interpreting the expectation value as an ensemble average, an average over systems, in which case they would have to treat time separately, or interpreting the expectation value as a time average, in which case they would have to treat systems separately. Physicists chose the former. Let me give a sketch of how this works. How might a Victorian physicist model a gas in a box? Well, they would start with a state variable, little omega, which describes the configuration of all the components of the gas at some time t. And this is one possible configuration in the set of all possible configurations, the state space, big omega. We have a probability density function, which assigns probability densities to states, and the observable we might measure, which could be pressure or volume or temperature, is a function of the state. The important new ingredient here is the dynamic. This is a rule for mapping from the state at one time to the state at the next time. So we've introduced time to the problem, and we have a way of following the temporal evolution of the state of the gas. Here's a visual representation of this. The state space is enclosed by the big black circle. And we have a trajectory where we start at state omega zero, apply the dynamic to reach omega at time one, apply the dynamic again to reach omega at time two, and we move through the state space. If we start at a different point, then we will move through the state space in a different way. Now, there's an appealing hypothesis that we'd like to be able to make which is that regardless of where it starts, the state little omega t visits all of the state space big omega with frequency proportional to the local probability density. If that's true, then Birkhoff's equality holds, which is that the average along a long trajectory of the function of the state variable will be equal to the probability weighted average over all possible states. This is named after Birkhoff, who was a mathematician who studied the conditions under which such equalities hold in the 1930s. If this ergodic hypothesis is valid, then it allows a trick. If we're interested, as physicists were, in the time average f bar on the left, we can find it by computing the expectation value, or ensemble average, on the right. Now, Boltzmann proposed this trick in the 1870s, and it is useful when we can reason, in other words, do physics, about the possible configurations of the gas. But when we are interested in the evolution of one system, the real system we're studying, over time. And of course, we can only use this trick when ergodicity is a valid assumption. Returning to why this matters, Random variables and expectation values are used widely in science, and this use predates ergodicity. Physicists have thought carefully about the meaning of these objects and whether time averages are equal to ensemble averages. But ergodicity is underappreciated in other fields, for example in economics, until now. It is important because if we use expectation values, especially if we use them as reflective of temporal phenomena, then we can get caught out, because many simple and realistic stochastic processes are non-ergodic. So now I want to run through some examples of ergodic and non-ergodic processes. We'll start with a very simple ergodic process, which is trivial sampling. At each point in time and in each system, we draw an independent realisation of a random variable. There is essentially no dynamic here, we're just firing darts into the sample space, 
and there's no dependence on the initial condition. Time and ensemble averages are statistically identical here, so ergodicity is guaranteed. In this example, we're tossing a coin and we get one for a head and naught for a tail. Clearly, if we average over a single trajectory for a long time, we will eventually get the same number, a half, as if we average over many different systems at some fixed time. The next example is a little more subtle. It's an autoregressive or mean reverting process, where the observation at time t plus 1 is some fraction of the observation at time t plus the realisation of a random variable. And this fraction has magnitude less than 1, which means we have weak path dependence. As we proceed along a trajectory, we eventually forget about the initial condition. Here are some trajectories on the screen where we displace away from the mean initially and allow the process to run, and eventually we get a process which executes some motion around the mean. Clearly, if we average over a long trajectory here, it will be equivalent to taking an average over many different trajectories, provided the latter average is taken a sufficient distance away from the initial condition such that we've forgotten about it. Now I want to give some examples of where we break ergodicity. The first example is Polya's urn, which is a game. We have an urn with a red and a green ball in it initially, and we draw it round on one of the balls. Whichever ball we draw, we add another ball of the same colour to the urn. So, here in the next round, we will draw from an urn which contains two green balls and one red ball. And the question we want to ask is, after many rounds of the game, what is the fraction of green balls to total balls? So, we run this game once and we get a trajectory that looks like this. We start at a ball fraction of 0.5, and we ended a ball fraction of around 0.8. And it looks like we've converged to something stable and meaningful here. But when we run the game again, we get a different outcome. And again, and again, and again. What's happening here is that although the ensemble average is a stable number, a half, each of these trajectories converges to the realization of a random variable a uniform random variable from 0 to 1, and therefore each time average is also the realisation of a random variable. The reason for this is that this process displays strong path dependence and reinforcement. Initial draws are very influential on the ball fraction, which becomes increasingly locked in as the urn fills up with balls. This is enough to break ergodicity. The final example is of a more realistic non-ergodic process, random multiplicative growth. This is a standard model of the evolution of asset prices in finance and cell populations in biology. Indeed, we sometimes call this the equation of life because it's a description of something that self-multiplies. So the value of x at time t plus 1 is, with probability half, 1.5 times the value of x at time t. In other words, it goes up 50%. And with probability half, 0.6 times that. So it goes down 40%. So let's simulate some trajectories of this process. The red line here is the ensemble average, the average over infinitely many trajectories. And this grows exponentially in time. As we can see, for short times, the trajectories are all over the place. But as we increase the number of rounds that we play, a trend emerges where the ensemble average is growing exponentially, but almost all of the trajectories are decaying exponentially. So we have a disconnect between the ensemble average, which exhibits one behaviour, and the individual systems, which exhibit another. So again, ergodicity is broken. I want to end this talk with a topical puzzle to illustrate that ergodicity matters beyond physics and economics. A vaccine is said to be 70% effective on average. Does this mean it is effective 70% of the time in 100% of the people, or 100% of the time in 70% of people? So while you ponder that, let me thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found it helpful, and I hope that you will enjoy 
the other videos in this channel.